The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shoo Sin Shoo Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as usual, my co-host AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Uh, you know, not much, not much. Finally, got my hair did. Got your weird, your COVID. weird haircut. <laughs> yes. I need a haircut bad. It's uh, it's a little poofy. <laughs> it's yeah, a little flattened down right now, thanks to uh. Thanks to some stuff I bought that I don't usually put in my hair, but uh, it's it's bad if I don't have it in, man. It's it's out here. <laughs> so yeah, mine mine was pretty bad. I uh, I had to do it. I, I I had the wife do it. She did a a pretty bang up job with the clippers. It was a little trial and error to try to get it to actually cut. I was yeah. like, well, let's start with this size, and then right. it just wasn't doing anything. I was like. Okay, let's move up one. Eh, still nothing. I was like, just do a one. It's it's fine. Let's just let's go for it. Nice. So yeah, it's uh it definitely helps with some product to get the little the little pomp action going <laughs> with the, the length on top. But uh, turned out turned out pretty good. Pretty, my uh, wife, pretty happy. With it. My wife is like terrified of cutting my hair because the last <laughs> time she cut my hair, um, she decided. I said, here, use the two or whatever it was, and. Yeah. I even said, I said, start on the side. And she just goes, Bzzz. and I was like, what the hell is that? What part of start on the side did you not get? So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, that was when we were dating. <laughs> so she is like just terrified of it. Uh, uh, she was scarred, so she won't do it. So uh, better news, though, I, I finally get my son a haircut who's been like refusing to get a haircut forever. Um, he's had two haircuts in his life. He's three and a half. And uh, every haircut has been either me pinning him down in the bathtub, trying to do it, like wrestling him, or uh, we did it at the barbershop. Same thing. Had to wrestle him down. Had to like pin him down. And he screamed and yelled the whole time. Uh, but I was able to finally do it this time. And it was like perfect. He didn't do anything. I was like, Oh my god, this is amazing! <laughs> uh, it just you just sat there, like just did it. Watch my phone. I was watching like Disney Plus on my phone. It was it was great. So uh, nice. hopefully that that keeps because he needs way more haircuts than what he's been getting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, enough about haircuts. Um, let's talk some sports, man. Uh, twenty twenty fantasy baseball might be closer than we think. Hopefully. Uh, the owners put a plan out that they approved. Um, the players had a little backlash though. They don't like, um, the big thing that they're hung up on is the fact that the, the owners want a 50, 50 revenue split. Um, of course the owners want this to protect their own butts. Uh, and the fact that they're just straight not going to make as much money this year. So they can't pay the full salaries or at least so they say, um, so, I don't know the names and outs of it. Obviously, I don't know the con- you know the the proposal that was made exactly, all the language, but um, it seems like we're close, but also not at the same time. Somebody's gonna have to give a little bit. It might have to be like at least a sixty forty or like a seventy thirty or something like that it's for the players to accept it, um, or just not at all. I'm not even really sure. It. I was. I don't know if you read that big long Twitter feed about. Um, from uh, Sean Doolittle, but he also I had did. a whole bunch yeah. of other concerns. It was well, well written, man. Um, oh, absolutely. Kudos to that. He, and, and but he was super concerned that it's just spot on, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's just super 100%. concerned that like they're just rushing this. There's no precautions, like all, all these things about you know players' health and, and and all that jazz. So I agree with him. Uh, you know, I want baseball as much as anybody. I want sports back. Besides kbo which i can't watch i don't know who anybody is obviously except for the few major league players that are over there and it's on at like three in the morning so that's not gonna work yeah um I, you know it's <sighs> haven't gotten into that yet i'm I mean, watching I've seen some of the random highlights but i i don't know it's like i just i almost i've been without sports you know recent sports we'll call it 
for so long now it feels like that i i just almost don't even you know watching something doesn't phase me it's like oh this is just some rerun from 94 or whatever and it's like no wait this is actually happening but no it's I, I i got sucked into uh last week watching one of the madden tournament games it oh, was like nice. actually really exciting and then i realized it was three in the morning and i was like oh i gotta go to bed <laughs> like yeah it was randomly this dude, right? Well, yeah. I guess it was like this double elimination tournament, right? And this guy had to, uh, or maybe it was like a triple, I don't even know. Um, but the guy that was favored to win because he hadn't lost yet uh, had to lose like two or three times in mm-hmm. a row. And the guy that he was facing only had to lose once and he was knocked out. The dude actually lost all three games. And I was just like amazed at how poorly this dude was playing he and he didn't change his strategy from game to game so the dude just mopped him up every game and it got worse <laughs> it's like you're dumb you're supposed to be one of the best it's hilarious um Ooh. yeah but i got sucked into it because i was like oh my god is this really gonna happen and it did <laughs> so yeah and then i was like oh shit it's 3 a.m oh well uh, that was a rough day the next day uh yeah. but yeah, I don't know, man. The highlight of my day with sports is uh, setting up little obstacle courses for my kids and watching them run them. That's pretty fun. So, uh, I, yeah, I see some of those videos. My, my daughter is I mean, super I've, competitive. <laughs> I wonder where she gets it from. I mean, I have no idea. I, I would not have guessed that at all. <laughs> she gets so pissed. You would have just bred competition. <laughs> she don't she gets so, that. so mad when she like will miss. You know, we do like a little beanbag toss, right? If she misses the first one, she just like goes, Bah! And like runs away and gets all mad because she knows she's not gonna beat her best time. <laughs> I'm like, just I do it. It's fun. To, can't wait God. to see her on a beer pong table in 20 years. <laughs> 20 years, dude. She'll be 27. It's gonna be like 12 years from now, man. Wait, what? She's seven already, dude. Where have you been? Yeah, I don't know. COVID. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Hashtag anyway. quarantine. <laughs> Speaking of beer pong, let's do our beer of the week, man. Yes. Mm, beer. All right. What you got? So uh, earlier today I had a, uh, a field study from Trogues, which was very good. I, and uh, I was, that was with, with some cohorts, if you will. Um, obviously all social distancing was, uh, was observed. Um, also had a, a little bit of bourbon, but, Right now, I'm indulging in New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA. Nice. Uh, nine percenter. This was the one that I wanted to try to, to do last week, but I, I didn't have it cold enough for my liking. Gotcha. Uh, it's a, a rare blend of choice hops, creates an explosion of fresh cut pine and citrus flavors for a complex, rich, and delicious finish. Sure. All right. It tastes really good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, what that equates to. Yeah, I like that one. Um, yeah, I feel so, like this is definitely one of my my favorites of the Voodoo Ranger series. Yeah, for sure. I um, so I'm doing a a beer that a good friend of mine, Steve Kelly, recommended. He found a uh, a beer store in Gaithersburg, Maryland, called Downtown Crown, or something like that, uh, and. They get this beer in from Brooklyn, New York, other half. Uh, There's not much on the can, actually, but this okay. one's Green City. It's actually like a little like gold outline of the city, but it's a green logo, so huh, it's, hard, nice. it's hard to see on the camera. But um, their beers are apparently amazing. Uh, they get really high ratings all over the place, so he kept telling me I have to go and go and go and go and try this, but every time I would like get over that way, they were sold out of all the other halves that I would you know be willing to buy. Um, so I finally got this one. This one's this one's good. Uh, I don't. I'm expecting other ones to be a little bit better, but this one's still good. I still give it a four. Uh, it's just a. Um, I think it's just your standard like IPA though. It's nothing like it's not like double dry hopped or like anything like that. Um, but it's made with. Uh, I had it in here. I had the thing up here. It's made with oat IPA with Citra. Centennial and Simcoe, so all pretty good hops. Nice. That I'm familiar and, and 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 like a lot. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to try a bunch more of these because you know the ratings that they get, like you talking like four and a half, four and three quarters almost on Untapped for like overall rankings, which is 
phenomenal. So yeah, I'm excited to definitely. buy more of these. <laughs> so, all right, man, uh, let's jump into the schedule. Uh, first off, we've got the good old strength of schedule based off of last year's win percentage and, uh, the top ranked team here at the easiest schedule is the New England Patriots. A lot of that has Gee. to do with the division they're in. And we you know we know the Jets and the Dolphins are pretty garbage. Um so that helps. But uh, you know, they, they didn't get a juggernaut um out of division, out of conference schedule, honestly. Um I mean Baltimore, Arizona, San Fran you know that's that's um wait is that the right schedule <laughs> oh i see i see what keith did here <laughs> it's confusing um i'm looking at it like miami yeah, at seattle really what is going on here i see what he did here sorry keith week. didn't know how to read your slide so yeah so i mean One, two, you know three, the oh, yeah, the away okay. schedule you know, kansas city that's going to be rough the, I think Buffalo games are going to be rough this year for them. Um, yep. Houston, I don't really know what to think of them this year now. Obviously, Baltimore, Arizona could be kind of an interesting team, but I still think they can get, you know, they can be managed pretty easily. San Fran is going to be tough. But other than that, man, you know, they're getting the Raiders, they're getting the Broncos, which, yeah, we love the Broncos draft, but I don't think they're going to be that great this year. The Chargers are, you know, on the down, you know, the, arrows pointing down for them the rams honestly their arrows pointing down in my opinion seattle's always going to be seattle so that's going to be tough but i mean they do, they just don't have the juggernaut you know out of conference out of division schedule that you know a lot of teams are getting so patriots looking good to you know repeat to get into the playoffs if stidham isn't a total disaster well so they they're showing the toughest schedule um with all of these teams, but I, I think I agree. I oh, think you're it's right. Like, I read that backwards. Why? Sorry. It doesn't look like it though. I guess it's just it's because not. KC, it, it's, I mean, to me, Niners, it yeah. sorry. I ever told you about that backwards. Yeah. Thank you for that. Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, they, they should be able to take, you know, one and one with Buffalo is, is how I see that going. Miami, I guess could go one and one, but I guess it's because it Houston really was really good last year. Right. right. And the Rams you know, still had a good a good record last year. Baltimore, yeah, San I mean, Fran that's, was re- that's what we're going but, off of, and it's like, okay, well, this is yeah. now a new. But year. that's There's why a lot of different personnel. So yeah. I, I don't. I just. I don't know if I'm buying this. As nah, the that's spread. that's why. That's why. Um, yeah, that that's that's why it's it's not. I mean, and then you look at the flip side here with the easiest schedule. Okay, the well, Ravens. Let's hand- Let's hand it to the Ravens. You know, four thirty-eight opponents win percentage. <laughs> I mean, some of that's their division. Cleveland was bad last year. You know, mediocre. Cleveland was Cincinnati. Down. Cincinnati, Cincinnati was obviously shit. terrible. Um, I mean, Pitt, Pitt was shit. okay. Still, nope. they almost made no the playoffs. But look, they but get yeah, the NFC East. Bad so as they helps, were, they right? still almost made the playoffs. Yeah, they get the I NFC mean, East, so that helps. Uh, you know, you get the Giants and the Redskins. Um, yeah, you got the Jags, Jags weren't good. Uh, yeah, Colts. I mean, Colts <laughs> were in it for a little while and then kind of fell apart last year. So yeah, I mean, I I see why their schedule is pretty easy, but and it's I kind of still think it is. Like I don't really see anybody on here that's going to give them problems except for like KC and you know Pitt's going to give them problems right you know Philly could uh Philly could and that game is I believe in Philly it is yeah, week it six is week six you know I think the the Tennessee game is yep. at least it's a home game but well what happened the last time Tennessee came to town effed you up in the playoffs <laughs> bye-bye bye week bye-bye yeah. season bye-bye everybody so yeah you know, I I think there's there's a handful of games on here that that are going to be troublesome. But overall, with with as down as their division still is, I mean, even with Ben coming back, if he's healthy for both those games, they're going to be knockdown drag him out games, and it could easily be a split there. But you know, I, I would anticipate the Ravens probably taking both of those games. You know, especially since they're 
Uh, they're kind of later. One week seven at home, and I don't know, man, at those those pit 12. games are always pretty nasty. But yeah, I don't think like Pitt's... A three three to seven point range every time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can definitely see them living up to this, but yeah, you know, they just I they, think the they Ravens just... are going to be just fine this year. <laughs> yeah, they they fell okay. So next thing we got here is uh you know it's fun to look at the whole schedule, but it's also like. Look, it's like teams and players say, like, got to go one week at a time, right? So let's look at week one, some of the more interesting games. To me, right off the bat, man, Texans and Chiefs. Who, who is this Texans yep. team, right? I mean, this is the, this is the team. It Obviously, the Super Bowl champs, Chiefs, right, get their home game. That's, that's what they always do. But it's funny that they're going against the Texans, who look like we're going to destroy them last year in the playoffs and then that amazing yep. comeback happened and then the Texans decided to go up oh, we don't want any of our best players we're going to bring in all everybody's players that they don't want anymore which is weird so um it, I'm very interested to see what happens in this game um yeah <clears throat> some other ones that, that kind of stuck out to me were um uh, Packers and Vikings obviously division game They've been kind of going back and forth for a while, um, you know, for the last few years. P- pretty tough games. Um, Bucks and Saints. So Tom Brady gets the Saints right off the bat, man. Um, I, I, I'm that's, that's great totally games. looking forward to that game. And then yeah. I think Cardinals 49ers is interesting. I know everybody's looking at it like, oh, the 49ers are crush them. Do you guys remember how well Kyler Murray played last year against the 49ers in both games, by the way? Um, yeah. and he's got DeAndre Hopkins now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> second I, year I, for the coach. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's in San Fran, so, so maybe not. But, hey, you know what, though? We're probably not going to have fans. So, are his home field advantage really home field advantage except for the travel? I don't know. <laughs> it may I not mean, matter. Are they going to pump in I don't know. Like, fan sounds? I think I honestly think they should. I think they, be I think they have to, but like they have to booze and stuff when their own team comes out. I think they or have the, to the do something, man, because it's going to be so boring to watch if they don't. But like, also, like that stuff's kind of illegal and uh, just well, get yeah. too loud. And I don't know. They're going to have to like monitor it to make sure it's just not like totally outrageous what they're trying to do here. But yeah, it's a it's it's a Dude. pretty fun looking week one, man. So. With that said, I wanted to pick out one game, both of us, that we were looking forward to the most this season. Uh, I'll let you go first. I'm going to go with a late season playoff rematch, and that would be New Orleans hosting the mighty Minnesota Vikings who beat them in the wild card as the sixth seed last year. And Minnesota has just had New Orleans' number in the playoffs. You know, there was the the miracle catch by Diggs that ended it a couple years back. Mm -hmm. And then last year's game was just, Mm. you know, not at all what we would have pictured from the Saints. Um, I mean, that that game screwed me in my one pick'em pool. Um, So did a lot of people. Great. Okay. Thanks for that. All right. And uh, moving on. Yeah, so, much. yeah, I mean, I, I think this is going to be, this is like the, it's the Minnesota monkey that's on Drew Brees' back. Yeah, but it's got to do the playoffs. Playoff you know, the regular back. season doesn't matter. You can't no, do the playoffs. It, it, I agree. It doesn't matter. But if if they can come out and show them, you know, right off the bat, week one, or I'm sorry, this is week 16, but... <laughs> If they can show Tom Brady week one, suck at your old, so am I, but I'm still better. Um, Not as know, old. Then, <laughs> the, yeah. Then that this, this matchups, it, it just reeks of, of playoff implications this late in the season as it is. Both of these teams are going to be jockeying for position in the division. Um, it, to me, both divisions are really a two-team race. And it's again, it is between those Bucks and Saints in Week One, and you know I think Minnesota and Green Bay. Yep. Um, 
yeah, even even with Diggs gone, I still think it's like, okay, well, we got rid of this one portion of this, but we still need to beat this team. I, I just think that they're going to focus on this game very hard. Yeah, it's definitely an important one. So mine's yeah. going to be uh, what I think is going to end up being one of the more exciting games. You know, we got we got the KC Rams game. What was that was that last year? Or was that the year before? No. That year was uh, two years ago. Yeah, at least. that game was ridiculous, right? I don't think – I'm not ever expecting yeah. a game to be quite that back and forth and just what seemed like a lack of defense, but there was tons of like turnovers and touchdowns by the defense. So surprisingly good for both defenses in fantasy. But anyway, yeah. I'm going with KC and the Ravens, both, in my opinion, the most explosive offenses in the NFL. Um, you get Lamar versus Mahomes – you get, you know, just the Ravens' defense is pretty top-notch, in my opinion. I think the Chiefs' defense is improving. Um, mm-hmm. This game is in week three, so we get it kind of early. Um, I'm praying that football happens and stuff doesn't get delayed so that this happens early in the season. Just I'm so looking forward to this game. You know, everybody was hoping it was going to happen in the playoffs last year, and as you mentioned, the Titans had other Shut plans. <laughs> Uh, but yep. yeah, this was this was the one that immediately jumped out to me. So I, I'm so giddy for this game, man. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing we got to look at too is this has been the game. You know, this is the the monkey on the back game for Baltimore the past two years with Lamar at the helm. 2018, it was Week 14 in Kansas City where Baltimore lost a heartbreaker in overtime. Great, great game. Uh, you know, 27-24 was the outcome there. And then last year, you know, in their rematch in Baltimore, that was Baltimore's first of only two losses. Hmm. They lost back-to-back games, week three, week four, in Kansas City again, and then you know, at home to Cleveland. So they they fell flat in the divisional game off of their bye. And this was this was the matchup that everybody was looking at for the Super Bowl or not Super Bowl, but it's leading into the Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was. <laughs> I mean But this time it's like, hey, it's a different story now. You know, we're we're in Baltimore this time. It's early in the season. Everybody should hopefully be healthy. I I agree. This is going to be a huge game. This is one of my favorite picks too. Um, so I, I like it. Cool. All right, man. Well, let's jump into these uh, these team analysis here. So we're going to jump through division by division, team by team, uh, and just kind of give little quick tidbits on on kind of winners losers of on the team based on schedule as it is now. Um, we did a little bit of forecasting of like with, you know, changes to the defenses that they're playing. So it's not just based off of last year. Um, but obviously it is all a little guess. Everything changes, you know, but it's yep. still fun to talk about. So let's jump right in, man. NFC East. Um, we'll start off with the Dallas Cowboys here. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So their over <laughs> under is nine and a half. Uh, you know, I'm looking at their schedule here. I'm thinking, you know, uh, I mean, I'm I'm seeing a, a lot of possible losses, but then right in the beginning, but then you jump right into like easy part of the schedule, right? You get Cleveland, Giants, Arizona, Washington. You know, Philly's hit or miss, Pittsburgh's hit or miss, but you know, you get at least one of those, right? Minnesota's hit or miss, but then right back, Washington, then Baltimore, then Cincinnati. I think nine wins is like right. Well, nine to ten is kind of right. Going to be where they'll be. I, I'm. It's tough, man, for me to to predict more than that. Um, I'm honestly going to go under, man. What do you What do you think? I'm going with nine. I'm thinking. I'm looking at it now. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I I gotta go under, dude. Yeah. I I think it's. I think you know, got the Rams eight. game could be a toss up in week one yeah. and, and it's a way they should win that game. But 
you know, they could come out flat. Um, Atlanta, Atlanta could surprise them, you know, and even at home. Um, if they do lose week one on the road, I think they should take the Atlanta game, but that could come down to like a really low scoring, like 13 to 10 type game somehow. I don't, I don't think it'll be that low scoring, but I, you know, you never know with Atlanta. They're, they're just, they're when they're on, they're really on. So, yeah. uh, you know, the two, two games against Washington should be wins. Pittsburgh, yeah. Sadly, <laughs> should probably be a win. That's a home game too, so I'll give them that one. You know, they should split with Philly. You know, hopefully not take both of them. That would yeah. really annoy me. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, the two against the Giants. You I've know, I've yeah. got like eight pretty so solid wins, at. and I'm then I'm guessing eight, they'll steal another wins. one. So you yeah. know, I'm, I'm guessing they'll take one of those Rams or Seattle games or Atlanta games or something like that. So yeah. yeah. Anyway. So looking at the schedule, though, like honestly, <laughs> it sets up real nice for them, um, mm-hmm. especially against the pass. Um, you know, the Rams secondary is is pretty poo. The, we know the the Falcons is Seattle isn't what they used to be. Cleveland, bleh. obviously, you get all the NFC East teams, which are bad. You get Arizona; they're not good. Like against the pass, Dak is like. Just licking his fingers, man. He's like, "Oh my god, gimme, gimme, gimme!" Let the season start, man. Dak yeah. already like shot up ADP and and rankings to be the number three quarterback on most people's board, and he and he is that for me. Um, with all the weapons they've got now, and then you add the schedule on top of it. Like, I can't put him ahead of Lamar or Mahomes. There's no way I'm doing that. He's a complete no. tier and a half, in my opinion, below both of them. But he is. Easily, in my opinion, the number three quarterback that you've taken off the board, especially now that you add this schedule. I do you agree or disagree. I, I do. I agree. I mean, I I think you look at what they have lined up here, and I, I just, especially like I said, like you know, we're we're both in the same, you know, mindset of them not winning more than nine games. So if they are going to lose the rest of those games they're going to have to end up playing from behind. So that's all oh, they could be close games, but yeah, still, yeah. you know, I just think Dak's going to have yeah, to I think, do a I lot think of a lot of them this year. could be close, but he's, got tons he's of weapons, have man. to either win it or lose it for him. And, yeah. you know, from a fantasy standpoint, it doesn't matter what the outcome of that game is, as long as he's putting up the numbers. Yeah. And then real quick, the running backs, I mean, like Zeke's got it easy too, man. Cool. I mean, it just helps to play the NFC East period. The other thing to yeah. think about with Zeke though, is he's got a fairly nice playoff schedule. Um, it's a really nice playoff schedule, except I mean, for week 15, 15 hurts, 15, 15 sucks. definitely hurts. Uh, 15. They Fran. get San Fran dude who shut down everybody last year on the run. Um, are you gonna are you gonna bench Zeke in the playoffs? Oh hell no, no. you're not going to, but man no. d- but that's the thing in the playoffs, like look, I would never do it. But like, yeah, you gotta temper expectations, you gotta hope you have another guy who can blow up because Zeke's probably not blowing up. He's probably just gonna get you a good no. you know, 15, 16, 17. That's solid. You'll take it, yeah. but you know, if in the playoffs, you want your twenty fives, your thirties from your studs. Um yeah. but you I know, mean, if it's... you can get by, you then get week sixteen against good old Fide. Uh, who is and it's, and it's at ranked home, so that's, dead last that's right tough. now, uh, yeah. according to Pro Football Focus, who who we're, we're using for a lot of this, uh, and, and rightfully so. so. I mean, you know, hopefully that changes a little bit this year. Uh, I mean, they they did bolster the line a little bit more, but you know, they still need they still need a, a solid edge rusher, in my opinion. I mean, Derek Barnett's really coming into his own. Um, but he, he's still got some room to grow and, and, uh, you know, I just think that, that it, they can't leave it all up to Fletcher Cox yeah. and with Zeke, I mean, shit, he gets past that first layer I so know, often with gone. any team. Then you're looking at, at yep. you know, just smaller, smaller secondary guys that, I mean, they suck yep. in the secondary as it is against receivers. So they suck against you know running backs too. <laughs> all they got to do is tackle and they, they just can't. So, yeah. All right, well, moving on here, man. Let's go to Philly. They've got a very similar over-under. Actually, it is exactly similar to nine and a half. Sorry, I thought it was nine for them. Uh, I can't read my own notes. So 
what are we thinking here for them? You know, I'm looking at it. I'm going one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I'm looking with. I'm thinking under two, man. It's gonna be like a nine. They're gonna be like tied at like a nine and seven, dude. It's gonna be crazy. You know, both they're gonna they're gonna wax Washington. They got like the exact same schedule, except like Philly gets New Orleans and Green Bay, and I don't think Dallas does. So, but no, Dallas gets Dallas gets I, Atlanta. But, you know, or, yeah. They get somebody else different. Anyway, Minnesota and yeah, they get Atlanta. Anyway, and but yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm going with about nine win for them too. I'm just like quickly eyeballing it. By the way, I'm not like totally studying this, but uh, that's kind of what I I quickly did. So over under for you nine and a half. God, I hope it's over. I, I just <laughs> of course you do, but I don't think it realistic. will be, dude. I I really right. don't. I mean this this back end of this schedule is brutal for them. I mean, after the Seattle, bye, Green Bay, in New week Orleans, nine, they go the Dal- back hey, to get... New York, which they You'll should win. win. <laughs> At Cleveland should be a win, but hell, Cleveland had a really down year last year you with start a ton in, of talent. You start so and that, end with Washington. <laughs> what, that, well, yeah, you start that, off great with Washington. Hooray, we're 1-0 and like we were last year, and look what the hell happened. 1-0 at the end, they, too. Their problem last year was that they had so many games that they should have won because they were fighting and jockeying for this playoff spot. And it's like, oh, great, Dallas lost. Okay, that's what we needed. Now we need to go out. Oh, yeah, shit, you guys didn't have any receivers, so hopefully like, that'll make a big difference. Win. But well, Yeah, injuries were a huge, huge problem for them, yeah. obviously. Sorry, so I'm when like, looking at their schedule, though, like nothing honestly really stands out to me. Um, you know, obviously, they get those. You know they get those NFC East teams. You know they get the Giants and the Redskins. So that's those those games you, you're kind of licking your lips on. That but should be four wins. Honestly, but it could easily be two and two. Well, right. I'm you know I'm looking at the fantasy football yeah. stuff too. So like th- their strength of schedule to me is kind of like in the middle of the pack. Uh, it's kind of yeah. bleh uh, for I guess the pass. You know except for a few games here and there. But like their additional games are tougher than Dallas. I feel like. So oh, when it comes Absolutely to when it comes are. to defenses, so, because they finished ahead of Dallas, so they're playing every other playoff team, you know, yeah. number one team in the division, New Orleans playoff yeah. seed that so, lost in Green Bay, know, unexpectedly Green Green Bay at yeah. Green Bay, which they but, went to and won last yeah. year. So okay, cool. Yeah, you know, and get, Seattle, and they get Baltimore that's, too. Well, that that's that they get the whole NFC West. And then they get you know, Baltimore. The Rams, Tennis. The Rams at home no, is well, is an interesting game. Yeah, you know, Cincy should be a win at home. At San Fran, mm, don't like it. At Pitt, battle between the Keystone State. Hopefully they win that, but you know who knows. Baltimore, yeah. eh, interesting game. Could be a very you know tight one. But then you get Giants home against Dallas. I mean, that's the big thing. They have three straight home games and then the bye. Baltimore, Giants, Dallas. Yeah. If they can somehow manage to at least go into their week nine bye at, you know, six and two, then they got a they got an easier shot at hitting that nine. But nine and a half. Yeah. I don't know. It's, well, it's like, yeah. So for fantasy, though, it's not anything like you're not loving the schedule. It's just sort of whatever. No. I don't think I'm moving anybody up or down because of the schedule yeah. for them. Moving on here, though, yep. the Giants. The Giants are six and a half over under. Um, I mean, the Giants, I'm looking here real quick. Yeah, one, maybe two, maybe three. I'm going under on them, too, man. <laughs> I just don't see it unless they totally shock the world and get a couple wins here. But, you know, I think Pitt's going to be better. Uh, Chicago could beat them, but I think that's a winnable game too. But it's a way. Like, there's there's just a lot of, like, iffy games with them. I'm going a little under on them too. And I just don't like the NFC East, period. Like, I just don't think it's a strong division. I think some of these over-unders are pretty high. Um, I mean, yeah, Dallas and Eagles are the close. but four, four and 12 team. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking maybe 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 5-11. Five, or even six and ten for the Giants. I'm not. I'm not thinking. I think it's close, honestly. I mean, and obviously Vegas is very good at setting these over under, so I do think it's close. Yeah. Uh, but uh, fantasy wise, it's it's uh, 
the run game is what you're looking for in this team, right? Like the yep. the defense, the, the the receivers are kind of meh, whatever. You're not really worried about it. Um, the run game is where it's at. So Saquon, um, fairly favorable schedule overall. Um, yeah, coming in tenth. But hey, the start though is rough as hell. Um, starts Oof. off with Pittsburgh, Chicago, who wasn't as good last year, but dude, it's still Chicago, and then yeah. San Fran. So you start off gangbusters, just boom, boom, boom. Three tough defensive teams against the run. Only benefit is the two of them are at home, dude. In San Fran. But honestly, but though, the look, I think Saquon's gonna. I don't think it cares. I don't think it matters. Well, it may not matter, but here's my thinking. I wonder, right? If he kind of stumbles out the gates and he's like RB twenty, right? Whatever, right? People are gonna be freaking out. Owners panic, yep. right? Dude, if that owner just go after him, try to buy slightly low on him. Do it because the rest of the schedule is nice. Um, yeah. Very nice, man. And the playoff schedule is very, very nice for them. Yeah, uh, you're looking ten, at you're looking at Cleveland or no, sorry, Arizona, Cleveland. And then, I mean, at Baltimore is not great, but they're. Yeah, but they're they're not. They're not the, terrible either. I mean, they're way better against the pass than they are against the run. Yeah. So so it's I mean, uh, you can it's, run on Baltimore. You can run on Baltimore. So yeah, I think he's a he's a guy who, like, I wouldn't be trading him for unless it's like a somebody's giving me this total crazy offer. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he stumbles out of the gate, so people start panicking and trading him. So. Uh, move on here to my hometown Redskins. Uh, over under five and a half. Let's see here. I mean, week one to win. I'm just kidding. Uh, I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> Philly, come on. Uh, the Sean's gonna torch him for two to three plays, injure himself again, and that's all they need. <laughs> it's all she wrote, folks. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Say, I mean, ugh. yikes, man, yikes. I, I mean, I could easily see, like, a four-win season out of this team again. I mean, look, the defense should be improved. Hopefully, Haskins isn't a total disaster. I just – I don't know where the hell they get five – I don't know where the hell they get six wins from. Cincy, I'm, Detroit. I'm I'm giving them the over, man. What? I, I am. Cincy and Detroit are the only two wins that I see here going like, yes, maybe one of the Giants games. I think the Giants, I'll give them one of the Giants. Who else are you giving them? S- Detroit, Cincy, Carolina. Okay, maybe. Okay, three. So then what? So you're Cleveland. looking at four. You're, looking at, you're giving them Cleveland? I don't think so. Give I think Cleveland. Cleveland was too hyped up last year. I think Cleveland's coming in hot this year, dude. I really do. I think it's a trap game for for Cleveland. We'll see. It's at Cleveland, though. I mean, they they start it's a trap at Baltimore, game. and no. then go go home to play Cincy first. So if they get you know no. demolished by Baltimore, and then you know come out fighting against Cincy, smells and reeks and whatever of trap game. Washington's going to come in. We'll see. Off of. Probably one loss at Philly should be a loss at Arizona, but that could be surprising. You know, I, I doubt it. That's a, that's that a one, coin flip that game to me. That's a hard. coin flip game to me. Honestly, that's, that's one of the ones where it's like a coin flip. So I don't know. I'm going with like, I mean, I think they could take four to five games, games. honestly. Yeah. So I we'll see, see Cleveland, at least one giants game, Detroit, Cincy, and and Carolina, so I'm giving them at least the five. Yeah, I think I gave them both Giants games to get them at this, <laughs> the six. That's what I was thinking. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll well, sneak in a win see. somewhere in there. Or or shit, they might they could beat Philly in Week 17 because it couldn't it might not matter. That's true. That's point. true. You get those little so, gimme games at the end. I I don't yeah. think about that, but you know, right now looking at it, I don't think so. But all right, so schedule wise. Uh, they're kind of man. the The thing that stood out to me was the run game. They have the, according to Pro Football Focus, they have the number one ranked 
rushing schedule, meaning the easiest. Mm-hmm. My problem is, does it matter? Because who the hell is running the ball for this team? I mean, is it going to be AP? Is it going to be Geis? It's going to be one of you know the rookies. It's going to be. I don't know who the hell is I mean, running the ball Geis, for this. Geis needs to prove he can stay healthy first of all, which is obvious. You know, that's my my booger statement for the night. Um, Peterson, I mean, I still think he's got some in the tank, but eh, I, I don't know if it's enough. I mean, I think he's going to have spurts and games, and again, depending on Geis's health, but if Geis goes down yet again, which, again, I'm not hoping for, I'm not trying to impose my usual injury curse here because i want to see this guy succeed i do too and man he's I a see rival this team so bad but this I, I i want this guy to you know succeed um and, and prove that he can do it peterson's already proved it i mean the guys should be a hall of famer um in my mind i am maybe people will argue me on that but he's had a hell of a run um and he can still be a a good supplemental back so yeah. I just don't. I mean, you're not really starting these guys over. No, you're not. And unfortunately, like players, just, I yeah, mean, I, both I mean, of them are. You know, Peterson might even be borderline rosterable unless you got a really deep bench. So, and who knows? I mean, honestly, who knows if he's even going to be on the team? Yeah, I've heard rumors that he could get cut, get which cut. seems kind of crazy, but whatever. All so, right, man. Well, let's move on to the NFC North, and we will start with last year's champions, the Green Bay Packers. Um, over under for them is nine. Um, I do believe they overachieved just slightly last year. <laughs> the defense was uh, not as good as yes. it was the first like five, four or five games of the season, or whatever it was. But everybody thought they were awesome, but quickly faltered. Um, but nine wins. I mean, you know, you're looking at the Detroit's. You're looking at, you know, Houston could be, you know, uh, yeah, dude. I see them getting over again. Because their division sucks too. I mean, they get two games against Detroit. If if it's a healthy Stafford, maybe Detroit takes one of them. But I, I just I'm not seeing it. Yeah. You know, I, New I, Orleans I, is a tough, tough one. I think they lose that. Um, but granted, I mean that shit. That that's another really good week three it game. Is. Um, I, I kind of glossed over that one. I mean, Atlanta. I'm giving them the win there, but that could be yeah, a tough I, one. I'm giving them Tampa I, Bay. I've got them about even 10. on the road at yeah. Houston. I yes. agree. I like Split them at Minnesota. ten. Yeah, I, and yeah. Jacksonville, Indy. I, yeah. I like him at ten too. Very I, I, so I'm 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 on the over here. So the Packers, though, schedule wise, they got a pretty favorable schedule for receivers. I mean, I guess it's going to be Devonte Adams all day, every day again. So ha- if only they had drafted a receiver, like everybody mm-hmm. in the world thought they should have, except for their own team. Whatever, we could possibly be ex- really excited about a rookie, you know. But not going to happen, unfortunately. So no. I think we can move on there. Uh, the Vikings yep. are the next team. We're looking at another nine over under. Uh, Vikings looking here. I'm going, you know, 50, 50, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to push. Ten. Can I go push? <laughs> it is nine. Can I go push? I'm thinking nine for them. I'm giving Sorry to be cop out here, but I'm going. I'm going push. I'm I'm gonna go ten. All right. Wait. What was that? Was that shit? Was I looking at the wrong one? No. <laughs> yeah, it's off. I keep following yeah. the moving my cursor. So, all right. Fair enough. Uh, so with them, um, I looked at the the schedules here, and and the the big thing that stands out to me is 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 Dalvin Cook. Man, Dalvin Cook's got a pretty cush schedule. Um, yeah. Tough the first two of the first three weeks, but then after that, it's real nice. And then the the playoff start, and oh man, it's not good. You get Chicago, you get New Orleans, you get Tampa Bay, and I know everybody looks at Tampa Bay and laughs, but Tampa Bay was amazing against the run last year. Still should be. 
because everybody passes on them, so they don't have to give up any rushing yards to lose. It's just air out, air out, air out against Tampa all day. Um, maybe that's not Minnesota's mo. So maybe they can do some damage against Tampa, but you know, it's we'll see. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't think so. I mean, they're looking at if you look at Tampa's defense, you know, they they resigned uh, Indomitian Sue. Uh, you know, Ryan Smith is back on a one year, you know, for cornerback, but Minnesota doesn't throw the damn ball. So I just, I think that, you know, with looking at the, the people that stayed on defense right. for, for Tampa, it doesn't hurt them. Yeah. I mean, so, they, they lost Carl Nassib, Nassib. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. So that, that's a big yeah. loss. Um, the end there. But yeah, I mean, keeping Sue was was crucial. That was big for them. You know, you know it just it plugs up that Owen middle. But too, yeah, but but again, you know, I I, I still think that they're okay. I think they'll and, be all right. Know, and I agree. That'll be. That'll but be still, it's, so yeah, the point is though is that it's uh, it's it's a it's a pretty rough playoff schedule for him. You know, he's up there with like the Zeeks, right? Where you're you're not benching him, but man. You, you don't love to see your studs having these like tough playoff games. You know, that's just, that's just brutal. Um, no, I mean, this, they, they're going to get you to the, they're going to get really, you to the playoffs. And then it's like, Oh, now what? <laughs> so, I mean, frankly, he's, he is a really good sell candidate, but it's, it's tough because it's so the hard. whole middle of the season is really freaking good. It's juicy but dude. It's so so good. high, man. It's so good. So, so. high. Moving on here, we got the Bears at eight wins. Not going to lie, I saw this over under and was shocked as hell. Um, looking at the schedule, though, I see, you know, one, two, three. Dude, I'm going way under. I see like five, six wins out of this team. I don't see it, man. Seven. Uh, I, mean, I guess you give them splits with one. Well, yeah, like yeah, they should probably split with Detroit. So I, I, I I'm good with six. Yeah, so I'm going yeah. pretty under on that one. Um, the schedule, the schedule for them for me sets up like this. So obviously, yeah. Um, you're looking at the running game here, David Montgomery and Tariq Cohen. They got a pretty nice man. Um. Eighth overall, eighth in the playoffs too. So that's pretty nice. Um, it gets a little rough weeks three through five when they got to go off against uh, Philly. No, sorry, Atlanta, Indy, and Tampa. Uh, so not terrible, but it's gonna not. It's, it's gonna be some of their worst weeks, uh, I think. Um, yeah. And, and but then, their their receivers have a really good schedule, though. I mean, seventh ranked overall. Yeah, they do too. And so then, Allen Robinson eight, could do well. They don't fall at at all, really. You know, they fall one spot for playoff weeks. Yeah, it's just a pretty nice it's schedule. It's hard for them. to judge that because you don't know who's going to be a quarterback. I mean, <laughs> Nick Foles. Um, <laughs> you, but you hope. <laughs> I sure as shit. I think do. everybody <laughs> hopes, man. Trubisky, I'm just I'm so tired of him. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's it's a it's a nice matchup for them. I think I personally like you know I'm not look I'm not moving any player up and down my rankings really for for the schedule. It just isn't something I do. No. But it's fun to talk about. It's fun to analyze. But come draft time, right? Fantasy football draft time. If I'm debating on player A, player B, and they're pretty much neck and neck, right? I then can look at the schedule and go, oh. Well, look, I like their schedule a lot more, so maybe that gives them a slight advantage. That's maybe where I use it, right? Um, obviously, I will build. I could build that into my rankings. I just don't usually do it. Um, but it's uh, it's one of those things where uh, you know, especially if it's between like running back and receiver or something like that. Um, that that's kind of how I I play it. Um, moving on here to the Detroit Lions, uh, their over under is six and a half. Looking at Detroit here, got a 50-50 there. I got a, you know, maybe one, maybe two. Giving them six. Maybe three, four. I think it's, I think it's six. 
Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking around the same too. I've got five or six. Unless they're gonna just sneak up and like win some random. I mean, hey, game. Stafford was like, amazing last year. I think everybody forgets it. Stafford was awesome last year until he got hurt, dude. He was on yeah. pace for like almost five thousand yards, I think. Um, so it's unfortunate what happened to them, and they did draft Swift. Um, so you know, the one big thing, the other thing that happened yeah. to them last year, they had zero run game because KJ got hurt again, again, and again, and again. <laughs> Um, and so I mean, look, maybe they pack, maybe they make a good one-two punch, and they don't have to, you know, KJ doesn't get hurt, and he can stay healthy. Obviously, they still got Galladay. That's good. Um, the defense just isn't very good there. So that you know, and I yeah. think that they lost Slay this year, right? He moved. Yep, he's an eagle. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's not going to be good. Anybody facing the, the Lions' defense is going to be looking good here. Uh, where my eye went to immediately was the receivers. Their uh their schedule is very very good uh, all up until playoff times where they get Green Bay Tennessee and then Tampa so three brutal games Dude, there um not man, not rough. awesome for them so that sucks that sucks big time holiday is gonna be awesome for me in my dynasty until playoffs and I'm yeah gonna be right like when it matters so. just on that cusp and then just get like yeah yet another he's another one of those guys though that like you, you, you don't sit you know who you worry about most there is like marvin jones yeah. like marvin jones could have like a super good season in the middle i'd be selling 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 marvin jones if he has like three massive games in a row and just be like bye peace because yeah. he's not going to continue it that's his mo that's what he does he has these huge games and then he just disappears even with stafford it doesn't matter um yeah. galladay could galladay is good enough to make it happen against even the best so i'm good with that um so, I, yeah. I mean i think this is this is definitely a make or break year for for carry on um you know him and guys both in the same draft class you know three years in and really not much to show for it while this will be their third year and it's like what do you have right injuries that's 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 pretty, what you have pretty much pretty much so, so yeah i think that's uh that's where we're looking there so i did just want to point out i popped open my second beer um i started drinking the first one a little early uh, i'm not gonna have any more of these and i've never had this on the show but it's uh by peabody Heights brewery it's Oof. the astrodon hazy ipa and it's a uh it's very good. I've actually had their their double Astrodon before on the show, and I want to say I gave that one a four. Um, Pe- Peabody's a local, aren't they? It is. Yeah, they. I had their. Uh, that's not the one with the the trash thing on it, is it? Mm. The trash wheel that's in the in Baltimore. I don't know. I don't you do realize how often I go to Baltimore now, right? Like never. <laughs> no, I don't I know what what's the what's it called Peabody Heights this is the Astrodon um no I don't think, no, I don't think that's it uh so I gave their double Astrodon I gave it a four and I'm giving their Astrodon three and a half so it's it's good but it's just like a normal IPA which I mean it is it's just like a standard New England IPA uh, it's good yeah it's just nothing out of this world. So I, no, I was also not, cracked. I did hear that. Beer. It is uh, a favorite of yours and mine. Um, thanks to you. The Stone Fear Love. Oh, yes. Or sorry, Fear Movie Lions Double IPA. Oh, yeah. Uh, God, this thing's good. Yeah, so I'm, good. I'm a big fan of that one. So, all right, well, let's move on here. Uh, let's try to rip through these. We're uh, on to the <laughs> NFC South. We love here with last year's champs, the New Orleans Saints at a ten and a half. I'm not even looking at the schedule. I'm going over. <laughs> like it's just gonna happen, dude. Yeah, they're too I, good. I just, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm giving it to them. I'm giving them eleven. They got a rough schedule, though, man. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, they get KC, uh, but I mean, they sprinkled in like Denver somehow, and <laughs> like. And I don't care, dude. I don't care Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. I, I still do not think Tampa Bay can beat this team. So Nine, I'm giving it to him. Ten, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll give him 11. So 
Obviously, the thing you go to here, I mean, they got weapons galore, but the passing game is looking pretty, pretty nice. Uh, Michael Thomas and addition uh, Emmanuel Sanders looking good here with one of the top ranked um, schedules, like four wide receivers. Uh, yeah. Starts off a little rough. Gets you know, obviously there's some hard games sprinkled in, but it's nothing like they just don't. They have a lot of green on the chart. Let's put it that way. Uh, it, it's so a lot it's, of it's a lot of up and down, like really starting down, going up, kind of going back down. But you're just not worried about it. Up, back like it just down, it just makes week, you feel even. Yeah. Boom boom yeah bad bad boom 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 good <laughs> yeah, it just makes you feel really, really good bad. having I'm Michael Thomas playoff. and like in those mock drafts that yeah. we've done. I've had the fourth pick twice in a row. You know, we repeated yep. our. our I took Michael order, Thomas yeah. both times. You have to. And I, I, he's so good to me. And I wrote it in the article. He to me is the safest player outside of Christian McCaffrey, in in fantasy. Now I will not draft him number two, because I think Zeke. And um, uh, and Barkley. Saquon, yeah, are just the tier that they push put them up it, in the running back position, which is you need your running backs, right? Makes them it, more valuable. Yeah. Um. But to me, like just getting that safety valve of Michael Thomas. Now, I will admit, my running backs have been rough in those drafts. So it come push come to shove. I don't know if I would do it. Um. But Michael Thomas, he's so good. Even though a, I know he's not going to repeat that performance from last year. This is no possible. Player. No, but but. He's so good. At though, the same man. time, he possibly could. <laughs> I I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I don't think he will. No, I mean he set um, records, dude. This is he's not going to break no, his own record too. I, I, I don't think he will. But so. he's a very, very, very safe play. I 100 percent agree with that. And I I wouldn't potentially pass on him at two, but. I agree that what you're getting on the downturn with the four pick and taking him, you have a better shot. You know, even with it only being two spots, that could be two more running backs off the board and leaving you with, you know, a, a tier three guy as your number one. So yeah, it's it's pretty rough. My running that, backs that, have that not hurts. been my running backs have not been fantastic. You definitely have to go like running back, running back, running back after that, and you just start reaching for yeah. guys. So. It's an interesting. That's why we do the mocks. It's an interesting, uh, and they're up on the site. Go check them out. Um, yep. But uh, it's it's an interesting exercise. Um, so it's fun to do. Anyway, they're moving on here to the Bucks. They are a a ten over under, and I'm going over. I think they're gonna tie the Saints with eleven wins. Their schedule is so much nicer than the Saints. Three, four, five, so, six. Right. Seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. Oof. Yeah, it's gonna be I'm, ten. And or I'm 11. giving them one of the the New Orleans games. I think they split those. Uh, and I'm at ten. Interesting. All right, because I feel like they might right. split the Atlanta again because that Maybe. week seventeen. But here again, that could definitely be jacking for position. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, yeah, I could see them being ten, eleven. Cool. All right, so the uh, this dude, <laughs> Tom Brady, I, dude, I don't know if the NFL did this on purpose, but like their schedule sets up super nice for Tom Brady and Mike Evans and Godwin and company, dude. It is so cushy with the passing offenses or uh, passing defenses that they're going against. It's uh it's very nice. Draft those guys, feel good about it. Brady is definitely um Brady is definitely looking really, really, really good here. Uh moving on yeah. here, Falcons seven and a half. Uh I'm looking at it real quick here and thinking one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, maybe seven I'm going under. I don't like them. I don't like their schedule as much. I'm going eight. I'm going eight and eight. All right. So I'm going to seven. You like them a little bit more than me. Uh, when we look at the fantasy schedule here, um, uh, 
it's not it's not a good fantasy schedule, honestly. And uh, the running backs is where my eye went first because I wanted to see what what Gurley would do, and and it's bad. Um, yeah. Very tough run defenses. He gets a good stretch, kind of in the kind of first third and second third part of the season. It's kind of like on the on the edge of those, um, like kind of overlapping. I mean, uh, but yeah. it's a I, I, bad back end of the of of the season for him and. Honestly, bad I just receivers too, man. I Real just, bad for receivers. I don't like Julio this year. I mean, I um, I do. I mean, I, I think obviously that that um that offense is is going to be you know the the pass offense is going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. Good. Like there's and like and look, they're for their receivers. It's it's not nearly as bad as it is for the run. So no. um now playoff time is pretty rough, but I mean Julio is going to get his. Calvin Ridley is going to be fine. I, I love both those guys this year. Um, so, excuse me. So, I think uh, I think you're looking good there. And then uh, last team in this division is the Panthers, and we're looking at a five and a half under over under. Uh, I'm seeing possibly one win, two, three, four. For me, they're anywhere from four to. Six. Yeah, Seven, I know it's it's eight, tough, man. Because they could like it, they could surprise some teams. There or, could be you know. a lot of a lot of like nail biter games with them. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I will go. I will go. Um, you know what? I'll go over. I'll give them six. Uh, I'm gonna go over on it too. So so. All right, let's basically, basically just like West. basically just like the rest of this out though. Like just kind of skim over real quick. They yeah. get a lot of the good passing defenses or the bad passing defenses, so uh, um, the, it's looking good. DJ Moore should be okay as long as Teddy Bridgewater can get him the get him the ball. Finish up here in the NFC. We got the 49ers, 10 and a half. Um, sure. What do, you, what do you think on that? I know, right? It's just I mean, like, yeah. I think it's over. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're just too good of a team, and they, they get – yeah, they get some pretty nice games too. So I'm liking that over as well. Um, not like the running game for the San Francisco 49ers need any more help, but they've got one of the best schedules lined up for them. So the problem with the 49ers obviously is you don't actually know who's going to run the ball. Everybody's guessing Raheem Mostert, um, which I agree with. Um, some people are heavier on him than others, such as Jonathan Chan, who took him in the end of the second round. Uh, in our latest mock, which surprised quite a few people. So um, there's that. Seahawks here. We've got um, – there's that change to slide. Seahawks, we've got nine and a half wins. Uh, I, think they're, I think they're capable of four. over. But I could see them finishing with, with – I'll give them 10. I'll, I'll stick with over. Yeah, I'm I'm going nine. I'm gonna say they're gonna be a nine win team. Um, honestly, their schedule is just kind of middle of the road. They're kind of like Philly, so not a whole lot to talk about here. Move on to the Rams. Their over under is eight and a half, so they've moved down from Super Bowl favorites just two years ago to now an eight and a half win team. Um, you know, I'm going to split here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, I'm I'll give over eight. on that. I, I'm going eight. I don't know. I'm, I'm too oh, hard on people, and a half. I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good with eight. Yeah, All I'm right. going eight. So, uh, it's a tough schedule for them, honestly, too. Uh, it's not looking yeah. good for them. Uh, you know, I know... They brought in the the rookie Cam Akers. He's uh, probably not going to have a a great schedule for him to to really thrive. But hopefully, he can make some some things happen. Um, you know, Goff. You know, he he's been Jared Goff. I don't I don't know what to say about him. He's just kind of he's somebody. He's hard. He's hard to say how good he is. You know, because he really thrived a couple of years ago with that amazing offense, and then just kind of fell off last year. And, I'm afraid we're yeah, going to see him fall they, off a little bit more this year too. So um, they just don't have good matchups. No, it's either. pretty. It's pretty bad. Yeah, so you know, maybe, maybe knock them down just ever so slightly on your board. 
Um, Cardinals seven win team. Uh, the NFLs are the, they're thinking they're gonna make a run for it here. Uh, really improve. But you know we're looking one, two, three. I mean, I'm looking at like a five, six win team. Maybe I don't know where they get seven from. Uh, I, I, I feel like they need to take both LA games to get to seven. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, man. Um, I'm going under on them too. I, I think, I think the 49ers and Seahawks, you can, you can argue over both. I'm definitely over on the 49ers, but under on the rest of the teams, you know, the one thing I looked at with the Cardinals, right. Is, if you looked at last year's fantasy points per game, you're thinking Kenny Drake and that Cardinals running game is going to have a really bad season. But if you look at like adjustments that the team's made, it's actually looking pretty nice for them. Um, so Kenny Drake is definitely somebody who has been moving up my board uh, in, in drafts and, and I like him a lot. I know some people are skeptical of him. Uh, but I'm not, man. I think this guy just was in a really bad place in Miami, got out, and just showed exactly who he is, and he can thrive in this offense. Yeah, but the problem is week 16, championship week, he's up against San Fran. Yeah, he starts and ends with San Fran, so that's pretty brutal. Uh, I get it. I mean, his playoff schedule but hey, is, you, is really you, nice. You got to get there, though. You know, That's the thing. You got to get there Giants. to win it. Giants, Philly, and then yeah, and, and you're again, you're if you get there, you're probably playing him. Yeah, unless you just have really good options. But based on his ADP, you're you're spending for him. So. True, true, true. All right, man, let's right. move on here. Let's rip through this AFC. We kind of been slowing. We, we yeah. were slow early on, so we got to go through these here. So AFC East, shockingly, I'm going to start with the Bills, not the Pats. So. um the Bills nine win over under. Uh, I mean, I'm looking. Obviously, you know, you're thinking they're going to take both the Miami and Jets games. You can argue with the Rams and the Raiders. I mean, eh. mm. can I say push? It's nine. They allowed it. They gave yeah, you the option. I, I, I won't would. push. So I think, I think that works. Honestly, split they the uh, they have a brutal schedule though honestly when it comes to defenses yeah. um ranked dead last in both <laughs> run and receivers yeah. according to pro football fantasy focus, wise so. i want nothing to do with buffalo this year yeah no i you know i i know people are really hyped up on the on the um allen chain you know try to get those run points for the quarterback but i just i don't know man i'm not buying it i i, I think he'll be fine but i'm not gonna reach for him over where he's going because I know I can get a quarterback later. It's just as good. Um, Singletary is somebody I like a lot talent wise, but I don't know if the opportunity is going to be there. And then they drafted that Zach Moss kid who they like a lot, apparently. And the receivers, yeah. I mean, Diggs and Brown, I love them as players, but they've got Allen thrown in the ball who likes to throw it 50 yards over your head. So it's just not a good situation. And then you add this schedule on top of it. Like I'm, I'm a big, big, big pass on this team. Um, Pats, another nine win team. I mean, maybe they're just getting some love because it's Bill Belichick. Um, but I'm kind of feeling under. I looked at the schedule earlier. I was kind of interested in it. I'm going under, man. I don't think they're going to get to nine. I mean, unless Stidham really would have to surprise people. That offense is just putrid, dude. I'm seeing eight. Yeah, that's exactly where I have them. Yeah. So. The unless Pats, they, man, it's they surprised some it's, some of these teams. Yeah, but. it's it's another tough schedule for them too. They're kind of they're not as bad as Buffalo with the schedule, but it's it's they're down to the bottom of the list too. Um, yep. And then, you know, you add the fact that they've got a you know basically a rookie quarterback because he didn't play last year. Um, it's not looking good for this offense here. So they're another pass in my book on in most cases. Uh, the Jets here, seven wins. Hmm, this is a team I do not like very much, but, you know, I could argue one. I'm guessing I, I'm, I got six for them. 
and that's like like coin flips on a couple. Yeah, I'm I'm going seven with like four coin flips. Yeah, so, so I'm going under here. So again, it's came, same story, man. This AFC East, they just get pretty brutal schedules, man. I don't know what it is. They all have pretty bad schedules. So you know, they're not a team that I'm really targeting all that much. You know, Bell sort of interests me, but I just don't think Adam Gase likes him. So I don't yeah. I don't like Bell that much. Um, yeah. Not that I don't think. I know Adam Gase doesn't like him. He's publicly said it. <laughs> um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to trade for him or whatever it was. So um, yeah, that's over. Dolphins six and a half. What do we think here, man? So you know, you coin flip those two. Uh, so Ooh, one of those man. two, three, four, one, two, five, three, six. I'm going six. So I'm going under four. on that one too. Oh, actually, no. five, five definites. Yeah, I'm, for I'm me, going, I'm going six. So, again, tough schedule. So five, maybe a couple know, coin flips they could get over. Yeah. But yeah. it's just a rough defensive schedule all around for the whole AFC East. Like I said, you know, so so Tua, not probably going to help you much this year. You know, Fitz will have his games because Fitz always does that. Um, but you know, I I know people are really liking. Uh, Devontae Parker this year, um, and they, they should. He did. He did really well for them last year. Um, but I, I'm, I'm knocking him down a couple of pegs. I didn't. Re- I wasn't as hyped on him as as some people. So, uh, this kind of helps my case. Oh, sorry. I keep burping. <laughs> um, NFC North. Start with the Ravens, man. We've got a over. eleven and a half over. Oh, you're done. Okay, done. All over. Right. Moving on. Um, fourteen and three. Yeah, I, I mean, don't think they're gonna hit. I, they could hit fourteen and two, but I, I think, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be thirteen and three. Mm, 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 yeah, I, I'm with you, dude. So, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, Lamar. Is going to be awesome, and he has nobody in his way this year to stop him. <laughs> Literally, it's like they gave not they didn't give. I mean, this is just kind of you know, this is how the psych- schedule cycles a lot usually. Um, yeah, but it is a very very favorable um, schedule for Lamar Jackson, uh, and you know, you add on the rushing yards with him, he's just. Set up again to be QB one. Um, him and Mahomes are probably going to fight for it most of the year. It seems like so. Uh, buy your shares of Lamar if you're willing to buy a quarterback early. He's a good bet. Um, yep, dynasty Steelers. Ooh. Yeah, you traded for him, man. Uh, Steelers here nine and a half. What do you got here with this one? I'm looking at it. You got you know a couple coin you know one two there. You got possibly three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, dude, I'm going over. I got a ten. Yeah, I, I think it's I think Ben, ben coming back. If Ben, long, yeah, Ben stays healthy. That's that's obviously it's huge. The like huge if, one if he's healthy all year long, they could be a ten, maybe eleven win team. Yeah, they they've I mean, got a they pretty have f- to pull a couple out of their ass. Yeah, to get they've to that. they've got a pretty favorable schedule too. Um, do. You know, same as the Ravens. You know, the the AFC North is pretty favorable <laughs> schedules all around. Um, yeah, so that just be the story here. But uh, Browns eight and a half. What do we got here? Uh, I'm looking at it. Oh. Lost win win. Three. Four, win, five, win, 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 six, win, win, seven, eight. I got them at eight. Yeah, I got them around that too. So maybe nine. Yeah, it's oh, dude, they're oh, right oh. on that. I know they're like an eight nine win team. So when in doubt, I go under. I really do. Uh, that's just my mo with it. I'm pessimistic, I guess. Um, yeah. Schedule wise, you're looking at. Their schedule is not good. For, no, for so their Chubb. schedule is not as favorable. Gets, for some reason, they get a lot of the tough defenses that the the, the Ravens and the Steelers didn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Chubb, man. I mean, like, I kind of wasn't loving him now that Hunt's going to be there all year. Um, but, like, how much does this want to 
make you want to not draft him where he's being drafted right now, knowing that he's got this like really 100%. bad schedule. I mean, I yeah, I I still think he's the the main starter, but I do too. Dude, they start off, I mean, they start off kind of mid middle pack through the first three weeks. <laughs> they get both um, of week but one. then it's like it just gets tough for the next three. Well, remember, Washington doesn't have a bad run defense. They have a very good run defense. Yeah. It's their secondary that's atrocious. Um, yeah. And they just added arguably, not arguably, they added the best defensive player from the draft. So, like, that's only going to help. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a tough it's a tough schedule for them. Um, and then uh, last but not least, we got the Bengals. Uh, five and a half wins for them. And honestly, man, I, I kind of think I'm just gonna go under. I don't like the Bengals this year. I think they're gonna be another really bad team. Burrow would really have to be good for this team to to win more than five games. I think. I mean, one, maybe one, honestly. That's maybe one, two. I don't know, dude. I'm going to give them six. I don't know, man. I, I, I can't do it. They'd have to pull a couple close ones out on nah. the road, but I, I I think they could do six, man. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Mixon, I'm going under. You know. If Mixon plays, I, that's the other thing, too. He's he's hold, he's saying he's going to hold I, out, but yeah, we'll see. But, but dude, he's, he's So the do that <laughs> the um, uh the schedule for them fantasy wise isn't very friendly either um and so joe burrow is not, going to be definitely not in the playoffs gonna be tested and Ugh, receivers in, in the, horrific oh yeah yeah it's gonna be so awful. so Burrow's gonna good be, luck burrow you know welcome to the I think, nfl i still think burrow could be good Burrow's- on that because again if we're projecting them at this you know under uh or or right over they're going to be behind so they're going to be throwing a lot so that only helps yeah, his cause and potentially the receivers but it could true. hurt him with interceptions so that that's true that's true yeah. all right so. nfc south start off here with the colts nine wins over under um that seems like a rough one to me man i i, I know they got philip rivers but you know I haven't looked at it yet. You know, I'm, I'm looking at like all my matchups against the Colts. I'm like, win for that other team, win for that other team. But I, I mean, you get Jacksonville twice. That should be two. At Raiders, I got him tough. an eight, dude. I got him an eight. I'm going Houston. Under. Yeah, they're always the I'm coin going. flip. They're always the coin flip team for me because I just don't know what they're them. just straight coin coin flip. You know, one. I mean, unless until you know, unless the Washington Two, three, games, four, right? Like, five, you know, six. No, sorry, not Washington. I mean, they get like the Jets. Seven, eight. I got them at. I got them at nine at most. I got. I mean, it's eight. it's push, push or under, dude. Yeah, I got them at eight, so I'm going under. Um, the run game is looking pretty good here too. So you know, you Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack owners, you know, whoever it's going to be. <laughs> I, I think Taylor's likely going to take over at some point, but Mac's not going to yeah. be left out completely. Uh, you're looking pretty good here with that schedule. So uh, until the playoffs, of course, and yeah. then the playoffs hit and then dun, 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 you get so the Raiders I... who is, it's fine. Then you get Houston and Pittsburgh. So that's not looking awesome, uh, but no, and again, you know, we'll have to see how the season goes with them. Um, I, I, we don't know oh. who's going to be the bell cow, who's going to be the guy that you really want to own there. Uh, but the playoff Houston's schedule is favorable. But then you got, oh, that's you right. know, Ra- Raiders, Raiders, Pittsburgh book ending. So you got to get through week 14 or hope you yeah. have a bye. Right, yeah, the backwards. Sorry. To get to get to Houston and then. Yeah, Hope that that pushes you through, and then eh, okay, yeah. <laughs> what else do I have? So Titans moving on here. Titans, we got eight and a half wins for them. Um, they were the shock of the playoffs last year. I think a little uh, smoke and mirrors, man. I'm not sure that they're really that good. 
Uh, the run game was just clicking on all cylinders, but I'm looking at it. I'm thinking one, two, you know, give them a win there. Three, four, five, kind of a ten. Six ish. Nine to ten. They're seven, they're over for me. Eight, nine. I got them at nine. So I still have them over. See, so yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. give them the over here. You know, they could look if the run game goes as well as it did in the playoffs, <laughs> I'll give them way more than nine. Um, if Tannehill can be as efficient yeah. as he was, I'll give him way more than nine. But nine's where I got him right now because I think there's going to be a bit of you know bring him down to earth type of thing going on here. But uh, you know, much like we talked about with um, Barkley, Henry gets a really really rough start to the year. Uh, starts off with uh, starts off with um, uh, where are they? Ah, I'm messing up here. There we go. Starts off with Denver. I think Jacksonville is fine. And then he gets Minnesota. But then right after that, Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh could, you know, figure some things out this year. You know, in the past, they've been really good, but not so much lately. But still, three, two of the first three weeks is pretty rough. So, like, he's another one of those guys that, like, maybe you go after his owner if he stumbles a little bit and doesn't have those, like, monster games or whatever, right? And just, you know, go buy him, you know. People panic way too much, like we said with Barkley. So that's another opportunity there that you can look at. Um, but if you are that owner of him, do not panic. The rest of his season is looking pretty, pretty good. And the playoff schedule is ridiculously good. Um, the By the way, the best. <laughs> so there you go. Do not trade him. <laughs> He's going to be fine. Uh, just and it's not even just the weeks of the playoffs. Week thirteen is also a great game for yeah, him. It's phenomenal. coming off of the worst possible oh, yeah, game Sanford. for him. You know, in week twelve, with uh, what with Indy, really? What? No, 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 no. Yeah, Indy. Wait, no, Tennessee. They play Jackson. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> What's going on here? They play Indy in Week Twelve. Something's off. We, uh, unless I'm reading these charts wrong. <laughs> no, in, yeah, dude, Indy was fucking. They were good against the run last year. Oh, oh well, yeah, interesting. I wasn't. I always thought it was San Fran. Yeah, no, 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 definitely so, not. All right, man. Well, let's finish so. things up here. We got the AFC West. Your Super Bowl champions. We'll start off with them. The did, Kansas City wait, wait, Chiefs. Wait, wait, wait. We skipped the. Uh, oh, we Texans totally did. I am excited. <laughs> I was like, slow it down. No, I don't want to slow it down. Texans, eight. Sorry, no, Texans, under. eight. That's yeah, all. I'll, I'll That's go under. Enough. There's no Jags, way for me. So, five. not a good schedule for them. Um, and, and, you know, they also got rid of, obviously, one of the best running receivers of the game. So, pass on the Texans this year. Um, the Jags five. Uh, that's gonna be a tough one to me, man. Oh, I think we got. Under, man. I, mean, I'm looking... I don't think I can see them getting over. Over that, it's it's tough. I mean, they need to really, really put it together and get Minshew's yeah, mustache and, I think, and I th- prime. I think I'm, I think I'm going prime. under. That defense has been decimated with people just trying to leave. Four. So I'm 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 over Action. it here. Um. With them, man, like they have a decent middle of the season schedule for the run. So if Fournette is still there, then you know maybe he's he's good for the middle of the season. Um, but other than that, I think it's it's a tough it's tough sledding for them uh, throughout yeah. the rest of the year. Jump, so jumping back to Houston, mark it down. They will be a two win team at most going into their week eight bye. Two. And I'm I'm giving them one, two. Damn, KC, Baltimore, Pitt, Minnesota, Jacksonville might be a win. Yeah, Tennessee's that's my win. Lost Green Bay. Damn, <laughs> that's right awful. Woo, yeah, I agree with you, man. Totally, I, I agree think with they'll you. be a one, one and seven. I mean, at best, they beat a I'm Pitt one team, and six. right? Like. It's at Pitt, though, no. yikes! One, that is three, a brutal three. opening schedule for them. Yep, yeah, one Ooh. and six. 
Where's that bet at? Maybe I want to put that in. Two and four. <laughs> That's a good call, dude. Two Great five, call. Sorry. All right, now yeah. under the Chiefs. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I was doing earlier. Um, Chiefs, 11 and a half. I mean, do we... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I mean, sound I like, to. sound like my wife. Um, One. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, give him one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, seven, eight, ten. Yeah, I'm going over. Fuck it. I'm nine. Going over. I'm going over. I'm going 12. 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I know, right? I guess they could be 13 to 14. Anyway, what spoke to me when I spoke, what was uh, obvious to me when I looked at their schedule was the running game, dude. Not very good. Uh, now, the, the receiving game is, is pretty good. So the one thing you got to kind of weigh with them and, like, you know, the way that they use their, their running backs, right? They're not true running backs. Andy Reid has employed this um, running back strategy of we're going to get them out in space, pass them a lot of balls, too, and they'll be, you know, just make things happen, right? So, you know, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, you know, you got Damian Williams who could do the same thing. You got all these guys. Like, that that's their MO. Um, yeah. Looking at the running back strength of schedule, though, against them, do you potentially knock them down a notch just because of that? Or you think, no, it's Kansas City. They're going to be fine. They're going to do exactly what I just said. I, I think they will be fine, but I, I am concerned. Um, I, I mean, second to last uh, ranking for, for the running backs. I know that they're more passing backs uh, or pass catching backs, but it's still a brutal schedule and you still have to run the ball. Cause if you can't even get these guys going on the ground to open up play action for them to catch balls out of the backfield, then you're going to be you're going to suffer. So it's not going to help your cause. Now, you know, the playoffs the ranking there is is kind of a, a little little smoke and mirrors because they have such a good week 14 matchup. But you're looking at, at Miami there. It is a road game. You know, Miami is slightly improved, but I I don't know if they're improved enough to be that great against this offense. No, probably but not. <laughs> then they have two brutal, brutal games for the running backs, you know, 15 and 16. Yeah. So looking at, 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 again, on the road at new Orleans, my, my game pick, and then coming back home to Atlanta. So I, I do knock them down a peg, honestly. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's re- it's real tough. You know, it starts off nice and easy, but Goes downhill from there. Week eight, yeah. baby. Keep from week eight. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Um, all right, let's move on here. Next team up is the Chargers at eight wins. And this is going to be a tough one, man. It's one of those teams that I kept looking at the Chargers and going, like, I think anybody could beat the Chargers this year. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, you know, I think easily got – I mean, let's I, probably count the losses easy for us. So one, two, three. I don't know, dude. I think a lot of their games are, are coin flips. I think they could go, you know, easily at I, five wins or at ten wins. I That's the way I'm looking. Yeah, at it. I, I've got them. But it, well, easily, it, it's, it depends on who's QBing. Let me put it that way. Because we, we have so it there, you know, are you thinking? Tyrod. Is it Tyrod? If so, if it's Tyrod, are you thinking more or He's less? Starting the season. They have more favorable matchups, you know, pre buy. Well, which is not that hard because it's a freaking week ten buy. But I mean, I think if Tyrod stays in through at least the first eight nine weeks up to the buy, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm seeing you know this the at Cincy is winnable. Carolina at home is winnable. Tampa's probably loss. Jets and at Miami. And then home against Jacksonville and Raiders. 
I mean, all three of those games, well, four of them, Jets, Miami, Jets, yeah, I mean, those are all winnable games. Yeah, no, they definitely Especially are. Three just, of them being at home. So yeah, they definitely I, are. It's tough, man. They're they're definitely uh, the, the the ultimate coin flip team this year. Yeah, they're a bit unknown, but uh, you know, either way, it's not it's not a great it's not it's not a great schedule for Eckler. Like that's the guy you want on this team, right? Yeah. It's just not a great running schedule for for them. You know, yeah, you love you love the fact that Gordon's out of the way, but you know, Eckler it I I think he's still going to be fine, but he probably does get a little built in like uh, reduction in my projections with with him just because of the schedule. So yeah, but I mean uh, their their strength of schedule overall is very favorable. It's just under below five hundred. You know teams they're they're twenty third. That means far as, nothing when it comes no. to fantasy. So I don't care. So yeah. All right, let's finish this up, man. Two more teams: Broncos and Raiders, both at seven and a half. Let's just knock both out right now. So we got Broncos, Tennessee. So, uh, no, no, nope, no, nope, nope. um, one, two, two, three. They could very be a two-win team before they're buying week eight too. I got them Maybe at six more. wins at best, so I'm definitely going under. Yeah, yeah, so, I can see that. Definitely going under. Um, and you know. Look, everybody wants to look at Drew Locke and go, oh, my gosh, look at all the weapons he has now. But you got to remember those dudes are rookies, except for Cortland Sutton and Fant. Yeah. Um, in the passing game, at least. Melvin Gordon and Lindsay is where you're looking at. And so with this strength of schedule against running backs, it is awful. Uh, so I, I, I didn't really like either one of them coming in because I think they're going to split a lot more than most people think. Um, but with that, it's not good. So last team here, Oakland Raiders, the Raiders, um, Las Vegas Raiders. I almost want to say, Oakland. Yeah. uh, I might have a couple times already. So Las Vegas Raiders over under is seven and a half. Just like I said before, Carolina, so maybe one, maybe two, two three, maybe three, Four, maybe five, six. maybe six, maybe I got seven. Them at seven. Yeah, yeah I could, maybe eight. I could actually, go slightly go over, way, but like I said, man, when I'm on the fence, I, I usually go. I usually go under. Um, you know, again, I haven't like done the whole schedule thing. You and a bunch of the guys from Fantasy Six Pack are trying to do like the whole consensus schedule. Like, let's make pick the winners yeah, and losers of everything. So, because that, that's. Which is a much better exercise than what we just did because, of course, you know, we're coin flipping multiple games. In that case, you have to pick a winner. So it it affects, you know, the other team. So that's the thing. So um, the only thing with, with the Raiders here is that, uh, you know, Jacobs gets a really nice start to the season. You're looking yeah. at his start to the season. You're getting Carolina, New Orleans, um, but then it gets real bad from there. New England, yeah. Buffalo, Casey. Good luck, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Not and you got. I mean, and, and the receivers gets, it, are middle of the pack. They're all, and it's honestly not even part, good from there, right? Rookies, yeah, except for Tyrell. So. Right after the bye, though, you get Tampa, Cleveland, Chargers, Denver. Yeah. Can't see again. Like, have fun. Uh, Jacobs is absolutely not one of my favorite targets this year, anyway. So, um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, all right, man. Uh, that's all I've got. You got anything to add? No, nah, man. Good. All right. Uh, everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a long show, but you know it's just a lot of teams to get through. Um, we will not be here next week. I have a rookie draft to do. Uh, maybe we'll recap that the week after, just for something to talk about. Unless well, somehow miracle back. we get sports, <laughs> which ain't gonna happen. But anyway, yeah. all right. See y'all later. Have a good night, and see you next time. Peace.